welcome to a new episode of the Windows Store application development blog series. Today I will talk about app activation and the related pitfalls. Follow me. Robert mentioned that number three cause of Windows Store submission failure is related to performance issues, especially if the app does not start in less than five seconds. In the details, your app must display a window in less than five seconds or it will be rejected by the store validation. So I created a simple app to demo this kind of behavior. Let's take a look at the source code. The application is using the task.delay method to wait for 60 seconds before displaying and activating the main window of the application. I won't start the app right now because you will see that it will wait for one minute and I don't want to waste your time. I just want to show you that you can use uh, Visual Studio to detect this kind of problem before submitting your application to the store. To do so, you will generate your package by going to the store menu and create app package. You will select the, deb the release version because otherwise the validation will fail. And when you finish the creation, Visual Studio will let you launch the Windows App Certification Kit. This tool will test a lot of scenarios around your application, how it behaves in Windows 8. Among all these scenarios, it will check that the main page happens before 5 seconds. I won't start the tool right now because it, because it takes quite a while, but let's take a look at the result report. As we can see, the overall result is a failure, but the error found is not really explicit. It's the application blah 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 was detected by Windows error reporting and experienced a crash or a hang. If you want to get more details, you need to go a little bit deeper in the report. It's in the performance test section. In that section, you'll see that the performance launch was not good. It failed and the error message is this could be because your application failed to launch correctly, which is exactly what we describe. So I remember that you need to start this work tool on your application before submitting your application to the store and everything must be passed instead of failed. But this is a good way to find that this is the specific problem that you have in your application. So now the next question that comes in your mind should be, OK, Microsoft, I need to show my main window in less than five seconds, but if I need to download a lot of information from the internet, I don't want to display an empty main page because in that case, the user experience will be very bad. So how can I do this? In fact, there is a, a solution which is called an extended splash screen. You will create a fake window with the same background as the one you have defined in your app package. So if you take a look at your app package, and you go to the splash screen section. Here, you see that I have a, a custom splash screen. You will get the same background and you have to show this main, this window before your main window. I don't want to dig into the detail here because you can find this code sample in the Windows SDK. Just start a Windows SDK sample, extended splash screen. As you can see, I've done this a lot of time before. And you just go to the first link and you will find here the description of what you are supposed to do to achieve this uh, splash screen uh, behavior. And please download the C-sharp sample. That way you will find the implementation of the fix. There is another pitfall related to application activation that I would like to mention today. WinRT defines contracts to activate a Windows Store application from a tile on the start screen, via a search query, through a share target contract and so on. An application can be activated for different reasons. No more only one single entry point in your code to create your own object model on which all scenarios are based. I mean that when a user taps your tile, the content of the main page should be presented. But when it activates the app through a search query, the user expects the same content to be searched and a back button to be able to come back to the main page. Let's see how to implement this kind of behavior. I will create a basic application with Visual Studio. I'm doing new project, selecting a Visual Studio Windows Store. I will use a grid application and let's call it full of activation. And Visual Studio will generate for me the skeleton of the application. If I'm 
running it, you can see that I will have a main page with groups and inside groups I can get items. And I can go back and forth into this hierarchical representation. Okay. So if I take a look at the source code, you will see that my application has only one override, which is the on launch, and this is the method that will be called when the end user tap the tile in the style screen. So if I want to support another kind of activation, such as uh, the share target, for example, I can go to add, do a new add new item, and go to the Windows Store. And at the bottom of the list, you can see that I can ask Visual Studio to generate the code, the skeleton code for share target activation, for search contract, for file open picker contract. Let's add the share target. And you will see that a new method, in addition to this new share target page, has been added. Let's go to the application source code. And here you see there is a own share target activated method, a new one. And if I want to add the search contract support to my application, it's as easy as with the share target contract. I go to the search contract, do an add, and again, I will get a new page corresponding to the result page. And if I go back to my application, I will see that in addition to the share target activated override, I have a new one called on search activated. Quite simple. So now, if I'm starting the application, oops, I just closed the window, sorry about that. Control F5, and you will see that the application will be started. I get the same main uh, page, and if I do a query with a Windows Q shortcut, you will see that if I'm looking for chocolate, chocolate in the application, I will end up in a page where the result for chocolate is empty because there is no chocolate in my uh, object model. But I can go back to the main page. That's quite fine. Now, if I'm clothing the application with Alt F4, or if I'm using this, uh, this gesture, I'm going at the top of the window, you see my mouse cursor change to a, to a hand, I click it and I drop it down at the bottom of the page. This is a way to close the application. So, if I'm doing this now, and I want to start the application with a search query. So the application is not running. I'm doing a search query, Windows Q shortcut, same chocolate search. I'm looking at the application at the list on the right. Here is my full of application. And here I'm jumping into the search page. So Windows activate the application and display this page. As you can see, there is an empty result page, which is expected because there is nothing related to chocolate in my, um, in my object model. And also there is no code. I didn't write any code to search in my, uh, in my object model. But there is something that is not very good here because as you can tell, there is no back button here on the, on the upper left corner of the, of the window. So there is no way to come back to the main page. So the end user will be like, okay, I did a search, but I can't go back to the main page. Uh, what can I do? Okay, let's go back to the start screen and try to activate my application. Full of activation. Oh, -ho. going back to the same search empty page. What can I do? In fact, there is nothing you can do because since your application has been started, it's running and Windows will jump to the same running application and going to the same page which is not good. So the only way for the end user to quit this, this problem is kill your application. Just close the application with the same gesture or with Alt F4. So let's see how we can fix this. If we close all the windows and go back to the application, what you can see in the default implementation here is that in the on launch method, the frame, the root frame variable, it's a frame object that will contain all the page in a, in a stack. And this, this is this class that is responsible for the back and forth navigation into the, the pages. So what the code is doing is creating the, the, the root frame 
and when the root frame is, is created, then it navigates to the main page. The main page is the grouped items page. And once this is done, the windows.current is activated. And the windows.current, the content of the windows.current is our root frame. So windows will embed the root inside the, the main uh, the main screen, the screen, and on this frame, the first on, on the stack will be the grouped items page. So let's take a look at what's the code which has been generated for the on search activated override. And let's see if there is something different here. Okay, we see that we try to get the content, the current content of the window that has been kept by Windows. This is to support the case where the application is running so the main page is has been displayed and we do a search not from the application but from the start menu for, from the start uh, screen for example so in that case what we want to do is we don't want to recreate a new frame we use the current frame and we navigate to the search page and as you can see if there is no frame which is the case i've tried to demonstrate right now which is the application is not running and I'm activating the application via a search query. Then I've ended up in this code. And in that case, I'm creating a frame like for the on launch override. And what I'm doing is just navigate directly to the search result page. So as you can see here, with the default generated implementation, you get a search page in a frame. So what is missing is the main page, the main window of your of your application. So this will solve the back button problem. Um, the second problem is the, the, the instantiation and the initialization of your object model. By default, Visual Studio generate codes that uh, use, it's in the data model section, a sample data source class. The sample data source class, sorry, just want to make it bigger. You can see that you have a lot of, uh, of class here and at the top of the class I would say there is a sample data source where everything is created and if you take a look at the source code of your on launch method here you don't see any initialization of the data source this is because the initialization is done in the main page in the groups item page let's jump to the implementation of this class there is no group item page so let's directly go to the groups item page and if you take a look at the implementation of the load state the load state override is cool when you navigate to this page and here this is where the sample data source is created for you thanks to the get group method I won't dig into the detail of, of this in this uh, in this uh, episode um, but what you need to understand here is this is where your internal object model is created. You know, all the Latin stuff that is displayed in the main window and all the other section. So what we need to do in the application code is go to the activation override and just steal this code. And here, what I'm doing, I'm just copy this. Oh, just a tiny tip. If you want to select just a part of a block like this, instead of the whole lines, it's quite simple. You just press the Alt button before doing your click. You click, do the drop until the end of your block, and you just click, and here you are. You have your, your block. So I'm Control c to put it into the clipboard. I'm going back to the Earn Search Activated method, going down, down, and what I'm doing, I'm adding onto the stack this main page. I'm doing it here. So if there is a frame, it means that my application already started. So the main window is already on the stack. So I just need to navigate to this main page if there is no frame already. As you can see with my copy and paste, which is very good for a developer, but it's where usually the bugs occurs. Here, the compiler helps me to figure out that the root frame variable is not defined in this in this uh, in this method. Yes, because now the name of the variable is called frame instead of root frame. So now, if I'm starting the application with a control F5 from the start screen, I've got the expected behavior. I will get the main page, 
if I'm doing a search inside the application, I'm doing my chocolate, which will be empty, but my back will be here. Okay, no regression, everything works fine. So let's close the application. And let's start with a, a search query. I'm doing a search query, same chocolate. As you can see, I'm addicted to chocolate. And I'm selecting my full of uh, activation application. And you can see, still, there is no result because I didn't write any any code related to uh, to the search implementation, but there is a back button now. And if I tap on the back button, I'm going to the main page. This is what I wanted to achieve. Okay, so you can see how to fix this kind of behavior. Be convinced that you need to do the same kind of uh, wrapping up your initialization of the object model of the application for each and every activation uh, override in your in your application for the share target if you are implemented the same for the open dialog everything should be done for everything okay i think we are done for today i hope you find this episode interesting for your windows store application development see you soon